Hey guys, today we're going to try out DistroBox. This is a tool that essentially allows you to run multiple distros together at the same time. Really, it's just a convenient way to run graphical applications inside containers. It also makes it easy to integrate these applications with your host desktop. So we're going to start out by running sudo dnf install and we're going to install podman. So th this is one of the requirements. So install podman here to manage our containers for us. And next we are going to go ahead and install distrobox itself. Should be pretty quick and we will be done in just a second. There you go. Now we have both distrobox and podman. So we're going to run distrobox create to create our first container or box or whatever you want to call it and that then we're going to run distro box enter in the name of the box that it created by default it created a box called my dash distro so distro box enter in the name of the box that it created and by default it creates a fedora box so i'm on a fedora host system and the box it created is a fedora box and it give, gives us a default name with it so you, we can also specify which distro we want to use and the, the name of the box if we want to. Anyways, opening up another window here. Um, this is on my host system. This is the kernel and stuff we're using. Now, obviously the box that was created is going to run the same kernel. So here we go. We're showing that we're running Fedora 42 on there. The newly created box is also going to be running Fedora 42, just pulled down the latest release and everything. So it's not really different from my host system. Don't worry, we're going to be running some other distros as well. But our first one, I just wanted to create the default system, which just happens to be Fedora, the same distro I'm running on right here. So I'm going to move this over to the side here and just split these just to have one terminal on each side. You're going to exit out of that box and clear the screen. And we're going to go ahead and create another box. So let, let's call this one. We're going to do dash N to name it and we're going to call it box one. We're not being super creative. Just call it box one just to keep things straightforward. And we're going to use the image Ubuntu 22.04. So we're creating an Ubuntu 22.04 um based box so that that's the distro that's going to be on there obviously and now uh this other one we're creating another box we're calling it box two and we're going to use arch linux so we're just saying arch linux and we're not specifying the version which wouldn't make as much sense since it's a rolling release anyways so i'm going to go ahead and create both of these boxes just click yes and continue on now this took a little while so i sort of sped this process up i kind of sped up the video here but it takes a little bit longer so expect it to take a tiny bit longer and same thing when you actually enter the box for the first time it'll take a little bit to initialize so we say distro box enter box one distro box enter box two and we're going to enter each of these boxes and yeah so this part entering it, initially entering it takes a little bit and I sped the process up there. So you can see here, um, you name same kernel because it's using the host systems kernel. You, you can see Etsy issue on Ubuntu gives us the version, but it just gives us, um, it, it's using a variable on, um, Arch Linux. So you're not seeing quite the same thing, but, uh, you know, you can cat Etsy OS release on both of them to see the equivalent information. So we're doing that on both of these. See one of these we're running Ubuntu and what one is Arch and it gives you all the info for each release. Now, don't worry, we'll be doing graphical applications soon enough. I just want to cover this basic stuff first. So I'm going to open another terminal over here and, you know, j just to compare. So on our host system, we're going to cat Etsy OS release just to show these side by side, just so you can kind of compare and see how we, we are in fact running different distros. Pretty, pretty straightforward stuff. This would work in any type of container. Um, pretty, pretty simple, basic stuff here. So you got name Arch Linux, you get the name, the pretty name, the version and all that other um, excellent stuff. So we're going to just close all these ter extra terminals out and open one terminal right here. From here, we're, gonna sh we're just going to show you how you can list these out. So uh, just a few other things besides going into them. So you can say distro box list and you can list the actual distros that you have. And it gives you like the relevant useful information you might actually want to see and kind of similar to how you could list them with Podman or Docker. So we're, we're going to say distro box enter and enter into box one. All right. So from here, 
we're, we're going to go ahead and just, we're going to check where we are because I'm going to show you some things with the file system. So here we are in our home directory. Notice it, it has, besides the default files, it has a few other files placed in here on box one, even though you saw we didn't actually do anything with box one. We have like an ISOs directory, a notes file, and a, a, a movie file. So I'm going to go here and show you, this is on my host system in my home directory. And you're going to see the exact same stuff in the home directory. And we're going to compare the root file systems too. Those are going to be a little different. So while this container for box one shares the kernel and everything, the, the whole file system and everything in it is different, including the root file system, but it shares the home directory. So the whole file system is different between the container and host system. But you can see here, some of these like the lib files and stuff are all different. So the whole file system starting from root is different, except for your home directory. Home directory is shared. That way things, that way all your applications and stuff will sort of work seamlessly. But yeah, I just, just wanted to kind of point that out. So next I want to show you the applications installed here. So these, these are all the links we have over here under app, basically all our uh, GNOME applications. And we have a few more to the right that I'm, I'm kind of missing right here, but we'll show you that in a little bit. But we see we have one text editor and it's not gedit. So we're going to go ahead and install gedit on box one. So sudo apt install gedit. Notice I'm doing an apt install, whereas my host system is Fedora. So on Fedora, you're going to do a DNF install. On Ubuntu, we're doing apt install. So I sped this part up, but here we go. Now we have gedit working. So when we type gedit from box one, it opens up gedit. And notice the theme is all different from my, my host system. You can get those synced up if you uh, configure some themes in your home directory. But yeah, here you go. There's gedit installed for Ubuntu, the Ubuntu version of gedit installed on Fedora. Now you can also run distro box export dash dash app in the name of the application. In this case, we're going to say gedit. And this will export the launcher for gedit it'll create a launcher um, on that's native to your desktop. So we're going to see that when we go over here and we can go over to this right area. Now I probably should have shown you this before that nothing was here, but yeah, here we have a launcher for G edit. Um, that's the, that's the Ubuntu G edit, not the Fedora G edit because I haven't installed it on Fedora. Now there are a few other icons there that I'm, I'm going to show you a little, a little bit later, but um, you can automatically launch um, e launch a terminal already logged into your boxes, which is kind of also very convenient. So anyways, um, for now, I'm going to jump into box two. I'm going to do another example here. So in installing some other applications, and I was actually going to open up two terminals in a, in a sec. So first, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and run pacman dash s. I didn't run sudo like I need to. I'm, I'm going to do this on, on Ubuntu as well, but I'm doing a pacman dash s installing Firefox. It asks you to, uh, you know, select a few defaults there. I'm just going with the defaults. So while that installs, I'm going to go into my Ubuntu box, box one and say sudo apt install Firefox. Now this is going to have some issues, which is going to be interesting to see. Uh, but, but anyways, we're going to let that run and install. I did speed this part up a little bit, but anyways, we're, we're just going to let this kind of continue on here. It'll be done really, really soon. So almost there. All right, Ubuntu finished and Arch is still going. Although, yeah, Ubuntu is going to have an issue. But anyways, yeah, we started Arch slightly before and it's still going. There we go. So we've got Firefox installed on Ubuntu and Arch. So let's go ahead and try running it. This is going to be like our first interesting test besides I guess G it wasn't that bad. So installing running Firefox on Ubuntu says, Hey, you have to install it with snap install Firefox. I thought that apt would install the snap version automatically, but I guess it, it, it failed to do that. So we're, we're going to have, we're going to try installing it manually. It's not going to go very well. So we're going to run snap install Firefox. Can't do it without, cause it can't connect to the socket for SnapD cause SnapD is not running. So I think I would actually have to install SnapD, which doesn't run by default in a container. But when I launch Firefox on Arch Linux, here we go. We have it up and running just fine. And this is, this is actually where the demo gets kind of pretty interesting. So we can see here. Arch Linux. So Firefox for Arch Linux, you can see that's what version it is in the about info. So now I'm bringing up the native Firefox that's running on the host system. This is Firefox. You can see in the about info, 
if you go to help, this is Firefox for Fedora. So you see Firefox Fedora version and Firefox Arch version side by side on the same desktop. Working pretty seamlessly, not a whole lot of work we needed to get these running. Um, no, no virtual machines. Um, easy way to get containers working with a graphical application and it shares the same home directory. So basically all, all settings and stuff are, uh, um, you know, it's pretty nice how it does that. Now this is not gonna, uh, there's probably a way to get the themes to be shared for this, but there are going to be different settings for these, but they can, you can still save things to your home directory and stuff like that. Anyways. I'm actually curious. I didn't test. So I'm setting themes on these so you can kind of tell them apart. I didn't test where the downloads go for each of these. So maybe it's going to download to a different downloads directory. Um, that would be interesting to take a look at, but I, I missed checking that for this. But anyways, I did want to create separate. I, I wanted to install separate themes for these. And that's, that's kind of what I did right here. So we're going to also show you that these are fully functional. We're going to go right ahead and just browse the web with both of them. Just go to Google by default. And here we go. We've got Google popped up on each of these um, different theme. Maybe that's because of the theme that I installed, probably because of the theme that I installed. We have dark Google on one and light Google on the other. All right. Anyways, we are now going to go ahead and we're going to export these or, or just the one from box two, DistroBox export Firefox. So I'm not coming back and fixing the Ubuntu version. Um, we, we don't need to poke around with that too much because I don't really care to get it working. It was just kind of to demo it. Um, but I'm sure we just have to get SnapD up and running. Anyways, DistroBox export app Firefox. Now we've got it exported. We're going to go back to that screen and we did see before when it didn't have Firefox. Now we've added Firefox to the screen so we can easily just click on that and uh, launch the Arch Linux version of Firefox right there. Now we can also go down to our launcher here and I don't have it here because I have it right on my bar at the bottom, but there you go. There's the Fedora version of Firefox. So there we go. Both Firefox versions side by side, launching whatever stuff each version wants to show you. Yeah, I guess that's a yeah di different search, different default search screen there. Anyways, what else? I wanted to show you this. You can click on, so you also have launchers for each of your boxes. So you can just click on that and it opens up a terminal in that given box. So you could drag these down to your bar if you want, but you can open up whichever one, Ubuntu, Fedora, Arch, whatever you want to run. So that's all fine and great. So one thing I want to do, let's list out all our boxes, see what we have here. And interesting thing I wanted to show you is you, you can run distro box, create, we're going to create one more, but here we're specifying dash dash NVIDIA. And you can do that to uh, grant it access to your GPU. And I'm going to call this box three. So this is, this will um, increase the chances that we have um, better perform, better, better graphical performance. Um, I haven't tested, tested it with and without side by side, but in any case, it gives it access past I don't know if it counts as pass through, but it's supposed to give you access to your GPU. Um, I couldn't elaborate too much more on that off the top of my head. Um, haven't tested it out a ton, but anyways, we're creating a standard Ubuntu 22.04 image here um, with NVIDIA support, allowing it access to our hardware. So we're gonna go ahead and enter this box. Entering box three here. Gonna take a second. Um, I sped it up, but not like a ton. And moving along. And that had actually taken a really long time. So I kind of just, uh, I cut ahead in the video a little bit. So anyways, here we are. We're inside box three. Um, Etsy OS release. There's our, uh, there's our distro, our version and, you know, which, which the, the name of it and everything. So we're going to do an apt update and then we're going to do apt install. And we're going to go ahead and install KDE Plasma desktop. So this package right here, this should give us a, a KDE, a working KDE installation. Now, sounds really cool being able to install the Ubuntu version of KDE on top of Fedora for whatever reason you might want to do that. Um, but you just to show you that you can run a whole, a whole um, desktop environment 
in a container and this just allows you to do it. Now, there are further steps you need to follow to get it working and to, to ultimately get it working. So there we are, we actually installed it. I sped that up a lot. So running Plasma Desktop should launch it. It doesn't, I think I had to get out of and start X isn't doing anything. So I had to get out of this terminal or out of this box and log back in. And I felt that would update my path, but it was still not working. And I found some other commands that I thought would launch it, but I think there's more I have to do to actually get this launched. And I know there are more steps if you actually want to get it for your get it added to your as an option to your display manager you'd even need more steps i have not gone through any of that so that's kind of like a topic for a future video but this is about as far as i've gotten with it so what you're seeing here this is the end of um, me poking around with it but i just wanted to show you that you can install it and it should be working but yeah this is as they basically called it quits here so this looks like kde init 5 i don't know if this is the optimal way to do it but that looks like it started it up and I would just need to connect to it for it to work. But that's where I stopped. So that that's going to be a whole other experiment for another day. Um, speaking of experiments for another day, you might want to hit that subscribe button for this channel. Um, also hit the bell icon so you get notified when, you, when we do come out with new videos. Now, not promising that I'm necessarily doing KDE on DistroBox right away on my next video, but I may ver I'm kind of planning on doing that soon. But I don't know when that will be. It definitely won't be my next video because I have a few other videos I need to kind of get published and get out there. I have a huge running list of videos that are coming out before I get KDE working on DistroBox, but it is something I kind of want to do. So uh, if that's the type of thing that interests you, definitely hit that subscribe button. Um, we do a lot of other tech content like electronics, robots, Raspberry Pis, um, hardware, software, all that great stuff. So definitely make sure you're subscribed, but that is it for today. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on that next video.